Hey, welcome to the Get Geekish Podcast. I'm Bino. It's Derek over there. Thanks for joining us once again. And uh, being it is the Halloween season, we thought we'd talk about something a little scary this week. Spooky. Kind of scary. Well, maybe not scary, but about people being scared. Phobias. Right. We are talking about things that people are scared of this week. Uh, this kind of got started because you were looking at some of the some of the strangest phobias around the world, right? Well, I mean, it's not even that. It's, it's like I've seen lists from, I don't know, years and years ago. And like, you know, they're like, oh, you might have this phobia and everything like that. And I'm like, no, I can say like, I don't necessarily have a phobia, but things, some things do like weird me out. So I guess that counts as a phobia. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, I think so, because. There, we can get to some of our personal ones too. There's a few things that I'm scared of that I wouldn't say I have a phobia of, and there's a few weird things that I know I have a mental phobia of that I can't get my head around. Because let's be honest, we're all slightly scared of somebody coming in our house and stabbing us in our sleep. Like that's a legitimate fear. We're scared of natural disasters, a tornado in your house. But a phobia is a whole different level of being scared of something. Yeah, de- definition of phobia is an extreme or irrational fear. Of or aversion to something. Yes, I'm afraid of getting hurt. No, you should. Your your body's afraid of getting hurt. That's perfectly normal. You're so afraid we, of like pixie sticks. That's a phobia. Would we would we say that uh, you have arachnophobia? <sighs> I, I would say I I probably have a light case of arachnophobia. <laughs> so that uh, that is uh, if you do not know the fear of spiders and a great movie that I'm pretty sure you've never seen. Nope, couldn't couldn't go near it. Mm-mm. I, I had uh, a, lo- a lot of people have arachnophobia. Spiders are kind of creepy looking little things. But it goes to the irrational fear when there's spiders that I know can't do anything to hurt me, can't do anything other than just crawl there and probably eat some bugs. And it's the heebie jeebies like squeal like a small child around them sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I know it's a mental thing. When I was a kid, there was all these giant orb weaver spiders under the deck at my parents' house. We had to go shut up go out and shut the dog gate every night. And they all had a good laugh at my expense at little old eight-year-old me, terrified of spiders, have to go out there. And I, like, jury-rigged some Home Alone-style stuff where I'd take my tape my hockey stick onto a stick with a coat hanger and some rope and throw it out of the gate to try and get it so I wouldn't have to walk through the mass of spider webs and things. And to this day, almost any spider, like, I have an agreement with them. I don't go out and murder spiders. Um, but spiders should stay out of my house, and if I see a spider in the wild, it, it does its thing. It's where they're supposed to be. We just, you know, we each give each other space, and we're good to go. If if I wander into their webs, they probably get upset at me, and if they wander into my house, I get real upset at them. <laughs> <laughs> I have... It, it, so this is, a, this is something that I've... I found out the name of it for a couple years, a few years ago. And it's not necessarily I have a, a phobia of it, but when I see something like this, it just kind of makes me go, Ugh. and uh, I don't know why, but like sometimes like if you look at something that just has a whole bunch of little holes in it, you know, and like shower heads don't do it, but like you know, if you look at a sunflower without the seeds in it, how it has that, I, it's like there's certain things that are kind of like that, and it's called uh, tripo, tripophobia, which is a fear of holes. I don't necessarily have a fear of it, but like certain things that have a whole bunch of holes in it, for some reason, just give me the heebie-jeebies, and I don't know why. There's a lot of jokes to be made here, but we'll stick oh, to it. Oh, yeah. 100%, <laughs> there's a lot of jokes there. But it's just, like, you know, I can look at coral. Coral doesn't bother me. You know, I don't have little holes, but like... So that's be actual, like, like a, not a golf ball. It can't be dimples. It's got to be full-on yeah. holes. Well, and that's the thing, is like, it's... Coral has the holes in it, doesn't bother me. It's just like certain things that have the, like, the little holes in it like a sunflower, it doesn't necessarily do it, but like if I just sit there and stare at it, after a while I'll just get like weirded out. I don't know. Um, so, another so thing I'm assuming just, you're not one of those people that wa- goes and watch people popping blackheads on YouTube videos or things like that. No. I mean, I don't, I don't need to. <laughs> no. Um, another thing that get, makes my skin crawl is ticks. I, I, I think I might be a little phobia towards ticks because like I just I can't stand them. I see a picture and I just go, ugh. I can, I've had them crawling on me. I've never had them, like, stuck in me. Thank, you know, thank you, but, uh... So, what you're saying is we share some arachnophobia. Because yeah, ticks I, are, in I, fact, I, arachnids. 
Did you did you have to Google that real quick? I double checked myself. I thought they were, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure it was right before I sounded all smug and smart about something. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I guess I have a little bit of arachnophobia, but not because of spiders, but because of ticks. It's just like, ugh. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, parasites in general. I don't know if I have a specific phobia, but parasites definitely creep me out. Any any creature that decides it needs to like burrow its way inside part of me to live, mm-hmm. I'm uh, it's weirds me out. It's. Ah, bah, ah. Um, yeah. I guess another like the the other kind of thing like if you see like the holes without the teeth like a skull with just holes in its jaw kind of like that's the kind of like a trypophobia thing it's like ooh that's like that and like the skulls that have that show like the have you seen like a kid's skull that has all yeah, the, like like a toddler uh, skull with the teeth haven't come in yet oh yeah where the adult teeth up here and like the <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah so but I, here's I have, the thing the, the okay, problem with that? phobias is they all. They're hard to pronounce, but go back to what you were saying real quick. I was going to say, I have a very strange one that is an absolutely ridiculous one. Let's hear it. Uh, there's there's a thing with drinking fountains. I've never had a problem with drinking fountain. I've never been injured by a drinking fountain or near a drinking fountain. But ever since I can even remember in elementary school, the thought of somebody shoving you and having your teeth knocked oh, out like in yeah. the metal part of a drinking fountain... Is always been a phobia to me. So even as a, like a seven year old, I can think back to the brown bricks at Hygiene Elementary School, and I'd go to get a drink, and I would I, I kind of position myself. I, I'm reenacting this, so even people <laughs> on camera can't see my feet right now. Um, but I kind of swivel my hips to sideways and get you know the 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 ready position with both your feet, and then I usually put a hand up on the wall when I'm using the drinking fountain as like one more barrier to keep something from absolutely bumping into me and knocking my teeth out. And it's never going to happen. It's never even been close to happening. But something in my brain says, oh, "You're gonna get a Kirby on the drinking fountain. Stop it!" And it weirds me out because I, I when when you know that you're like this is stupid. Why am I doing this? And you're still hiking yourself up against the wall. Like yep. No, there's no need for that, but I'm going to do it. I mean, I definitely have hit my... Because somebody bumped into me or pushed mm-hmm. me. You know, I went to school with jerks. So I've definitely hit my tooth or something on that. So I get your fear on that because I... It's, but uh, well, I never... Yeah, yeah, again, pain is scared, but you've actually been hurt on a drinking fountain. Yeah. You don't do that. I've never had anything even close <laughs> to getting hurt on one. And my brain tells my body to go in fight or flight mode and defend myself as I'm getting a cool drink of water at a drinking fountain. Right. <laughs> it's probably well, not good for the anxiety. But. <laughs> what about this? Uh, so I'm looking at uh, rare and uncommon phobias. Um, I'm looking at this one. I'm pretty sure every kid has had this. It's arithmophobia, the fear of math. <laughs> now. You know, maybe not in the actual phobia aspect, but, you know, every kid has been a little scared of math. But arithmophobia. Uh, then you have, is it chirophobia, which chirophobia, you, you think fear of the, like the chiropractor or something. Uh, it's fear of hands. <laughs> be a rough that life. would be. <laughs> imagine having that. And every time you see your hands, you're just like, oh, <laughs> Uh, globophobia, fear of balloons. I knew somebody who hated balloons, um, mainly because they pop and make loud noises. Same with fireworks. Um, omphalophobia, fear of umbilicus or belly buttons. Hmm. Um, a bludophobia, fear of bathing. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's see if I can even say this one. A rack. Oh my god, Arachi Trophobia. This is an interesting one. Could Just even, hearing that, what do you think it is? Arachnemagestophobia. Say it one more time. No, Arach Arachi Trophobia. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that totally Arachibut- wrong, but uh, some sort of pasta. <laughs> uh, fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Oh well, look at that. That'd be a strange fear. You have a ghost to just open up the door behind you. <laughs> it's a small furry ghost. Hi, potato. Isn't that a phobia too? <laughs> What's the fear of ghosts? Um, that's a good question. Let me check with my manual here real quick. <laughs> uh, that's fear of phasma- ghosts. Phasmophobia. Oh yeah, I should know that. They made a game of it. <laughs> An intense fear of ghosts and supernatural things. And so this is where the, the one like that specifically, because that's another thing that a lot of people, because of ghost stories and kids' stories, get scared of things like that. But 
it's a uh, intense fear that actually interferes with your life and makes it difficult to be alone or sleep or get normal things done. That's where things cross the phobia. I'm afraid of something. Yeah. E- even my drinking fountain one doesn't cross into a phobia. If it was a true phobia, I probably wouldn't use drinking fountains, not just assume something bad's going to happen. Well, I think that's the kind of thing, too, is like you – we all get the heebie-jeebies from stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I think you legit do have arachnophobia because you came up with a solution to not even go near, you know, the gate or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, me, I scream – and get all wiggly if I get a tick on me or if I think there's a tick on me. Um, I don't necessarily scream, but I just go, <laughs> that type of stuff. I bet you scream. Um, <laughs> but, like, you know, the, the tryptophobia, that just gives like makes my skin crawl. Some, some would say that's kind of like a phobia. Uh, it's, it's like um, a very dirty because, I mean, phobias are technically a, a form of anxiety. Yeah. And of actual anxiety, more than 30% of Americans, at least, suffer from anxiety at some point. And there's different levels of it. There's anxiety that's a little bit here. There's anxiety that's like, I can't function like a human being. And there's everything in between. So I think all these phobias also have little bits and pieces that somebody's phobia might not be anywhere near what somebody else's phobia is. But they both still technically have that phobia. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, another list here, uh, the 21 weird phobias you may not have heard of is uh, chetophobia, fear of hair, uh, vestophobia, fear of clothing. I'm pretty sure every toddler has that because they just <laughs> run around. Um, yeah, fun fact, you ever give uh, to somebody with a toddler pr- uh, clothes as a gift, the more snaps and buttons and zippers on that pair of clothing, the more horrible a human being you are. Just throwing that yep. out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, ergophobia, fear of work. Uh, decidophobia, fear of making decisions. Oh, some, some people with couple that. people with that one. <laughs> um, uh, dipnophobia, fear of dining with others. Phobophobia, the fear of phobias. <laughs> that's, so, that's that. That sounds like severe anxiety in a nutshell. Right. <laughs> And the thing is, is like we're not even necessarily trying to make fun of these or anything like that. It's just there's some interesting ones out there where you don't think of it. Right. Mm -hmm. You I mean, we've seen movies and TVs where they make fun of people with them. You know, like the cat comes by. and It's like, ah! but, uh, you know, there is legit people who are terrified of cats. There's people who are legit terrified of the air. You know, you Mm -hmm. have agoraphobia, which makes it impossible for you to go outside. Mm -hmm. The world is a scary place. (laughs) It can be. Yeah. And uh, like you said, the phobias are just. You know, I, I guess, in lack of a better term, like you said, an anxiety. And and I wonder how many of the phobias, because they have, you know, like you were talking about some of these names, there are specific names for all these different phobias that are nailed down to very, very particular things. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, I'm not a psychology professor or anything like that, but how many of those are stemming from other kinds of anxieties or worries that just they, they manifest or that's that's where they decided to show up so it becomes the, the trigger point for something else? Because uh, the... the um, Five different kinds of phobias, according to, to science, right? The whole diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders. They pretty much group everything into either fears related to animals, like spiders and dogs and insects. Fears related to natural environment things, being scared mm-hmm. of heights, being scared of thunder or the darkness. Uh, fears related to blood, injury, or medical issues. Injections, broken bones, falls. Which I have somebody that has the uh, the fear of blood like that. Like they legit, I've seen them almost legitimately pass out from somebody with a bloody nose before. It's crazy, not not crazy. But yeah, yeah. You, no, you, I know. No, it's not like oh, they're crazy. It's like it's crazy to actually see, you know. Because like you said, we can read about all of these, but when you actually see somebody with it, you you wonder like how it affects them, how they feel, and that's the thing is like we can look at stuff and make our skin crawl, right? We can get mm-hmm. up on heights and get that feeling in our gut of like, oh man, <laughs> I'm really high. But then you have the people who just get paralyzed because their brain just goes, nope, mm-hmm. we shouldn't do this. Um, I'm assuming the next one was situations like cla- claustrophobia, aerophobia. Yeah, situations was next, flying, elevator, driving. And then the grand old catch-all category is other. <laughs> Choking, loud noises, drowning, stuff like that. Um, the, the funny... <sighs> Not funny thing. Odd thing about this is you look at the list of phobias, and you could probably go through that list of specific phobias, and 
I bet those probably also show up on lists of fetishes and lists of sexual deviants and things like that, too. So the same things that are just things that happen in the world to most people. There's groups of people that are utterly terrified of them and can't function with them. And those are the people that really, really enjoy them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the, I guess that's the joy of the human brain, right? There's stuff that just terrifies you, and then there's stuff that you're like, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, since we're, since we're in the spooky spooky time, we've talked about phasmophobia, right? The fear of ghosts. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the fear of zombies, which is kind mortophobia, which, okay. I, I pro- Actually, I'm pretty sure I know somebody who... Who like they won't even play a zombie game. They won't watch a zombie movie. Like they're that terrified of, of mm-hmm. zombies, and I can see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering if that, if that, like it's also one of these things too. Is as science progresses, right? As mental health becomes more of a staple, more of an understanding, more of this. How many more phobias are we going to get? Is that why we have these phobias? Because I'm pretty sure the fear of zombies wasn't a thing a hundred years ago. Well, yeah, I mean, zombies don't actually exist, so being afraid of zombies is, that goes, falls right into supernatural for it, but they've pinned it down. I think, okay, well, well I'm not afraid of ghosts, but zombies, no, no, I, I can't handle that. Right. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure phasmophobia has been around for a while because, you know, mm. ghost, ghost stories are forever. But, uh, you know, zombie stories, yeah, they've been around for a while, but not mainstream like they are now. Mm. So I could see and, that. And with the mental bits, how many of these phobias and fears come from? The stories we tell. I mean, look at all Halloween movies. Halloween movies based off ghosts and goblins and murderers and psychopaths and things like that. All of them just stories made up to scare people. So it puts ideas in people's minds and now there's something else to be scared of. There's people that are scared of somebody running through a cornfield with a chainsaw in the middle of the night that's going to get them. Mm -hmm. They're worried about somebody wearing a hockey mask and carrying a hatchet showing up their front door. I mean, it's all these things that wouldn't legit you you would never put that together like you wouldn't put that together in your head like oh you know what i'm scared of somebody wearing a number 27 jersey with a football helmet and a knife this long coming to my back door and then telling me i killed his brother like it's 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 some specific things that i mean let's say i we have one that's near near and dear kids names annabelle there's the movie annabelle that came out after she was born by the way but there's some kids that try and you know jump on that bandwagon and try and make fun of her or do something like that because the name oh you're creepy your name's annabelle Prior to 2014, no one ever thought about a creepy doll named Annabelle before. Well, I mean, apparently the Warrens that the story's based off of, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but all those things, of, of the, the mass cultural phenomenon of things that people get scared of. People are, people are scared of clowns. Are people scared of clowns because they're clowns, or are they scared of clowns because they've seen and imagined creepy clowns? And like, okay, yeah, that's a really good I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm imagining Fear of Clowns has maybe been around for a while. Here, I'll make mm-hmm. Google that one. <laughs> well, it's been because there's been clowns and jesters for a long time. But where did that line go? Because it's it's become Fear of Clowns. But what was it about the original people that got fear? Because it wasn't their clowns weren't like it <laughs> around yeah. hundreds of years ago. Fear of Clowns but, started in 1981, apparently. First reported 1981 in Brookline, Massachusetts. Til- children said a men dressed up as clown had attempted to lure them into a van, and then the panic spread throughout the U- U.S. and the Midwest and Northwest. But yeah. but this says so, people have been frightened by clowns for centuries. So I think more main. That's again. That's the whole zombie thing of mainstream because you have some jack wagons that took that image. And ruined it. I mean, I guess you could even go back. Because yeah, wasn't, wasn't it just just three or four years ago there was that phenomenon across the states yep. where people were dressing up in clown suits and threatening people on like standing on highways and stuff like that and threatening mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And it happened like six times, but the word spread. No, oh, there's clowns at every corner that are trying to kill you. Well, that's the thing too. Is like, <laughs> you know, it can happen once or twice, but if it gets if the right person picks it up and takes it, then it's oh my gosh, it's everywhere. Hmm. And that's a, that's the thing. That's it's weird because like I would love to go back in time and talk to somebody who has some of these fears and be able to explain it to them and go, "Oh, you're you're not crazy. You know, this person's not crazy. This person doesn't need to be locked away in an asylum. This person doesn't need to be burned at the stake. They just have this fear of this." 
Because can and you this, imagine, ladies and gentlemen, is how Derek will be burned at the stake if he ever gets a time machine, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm from the future. Um, but can you He's imagine, a witch. like, <laughs> can you imagine going back and explaining to somebody, you know, in the medieval times, somebody who was agoraphobic didn't want to go outside. You know, everybody's going to look at them as this world old hermit. You know, they're practicing witchcraft, blah 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 blah, and it's just. No, they don't like going outside. They don't like feeling the air, that type of thing. They're scared of the big, wide world out there. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy to think of how much of that has been misdiagnosed in the past and, you know, where technology and, like I said, science has taken us now. Yeah, look at the, we've, we've talked about this one in the past, the people that used to be afraid of tomatoes. It's like 200 years across Europe, they thought tomatoes were poisonous. Fear of cats, they the devil, too. They were the devil's fruit. They were the, you put, you ate tomatoes, you're going to die. What <laughs> you hear that now, and it sounds like absolutely kooky talk, but that was common knowledge among the the European planes. Well, that was the thing. So you 1700s had seventeen hundreds or whatever. You know, we all know the Egyptians. <laughs> you know, praise Cassius royalty and everything like that. But in Europe, it was like they were sign of the devil or witchcraft, right? So they decided to kill a whole bunch of them. That's how the plague started, right? So I mean, it just again starts Karm with that karmic thing. retribution. Right? It just starts with that thing of that one person is like, oh, I saw that cat who was doing witchcraft. What? <laughs> I was coughing up a hairball, but okay. Well, some of those hairballs are pretty pretty rough. Right. Um, but then you have, uh, so let's get back to the, the spooky one. So, uh, what? Cucurbitophobia. Again, cucurbitophobia. Maybe that's right. It's the fear <laughs> of pumpkins. Or squashes, gourds, and melons, but mainly uh, fear of... <laughs> a, rough, a rough fall season for those folks. <laughs> right. Or you can have the fear of apocalypsinopsis, which is a fear of turning into a pumpkin. So watching Cinderella would have probably been pretty rough. So here's one that is, uh, I think, one of the most ironic fears around. <clears throat> Clear my throat here. This would be hippopotomonstrosis squipidid allophobia. It's the fear of long words. <laughs> it's like 28 characters long. <laughs> That's like the longest word, isn't it? It's one of the best. I think anti disestablishmentarianism is, is the longest word. Yeah, you're right. But I'm sure one of the scientific names gets even longer because they can just keep categorizing things farther and farther. And then you've got this hyphenated name that's... You know, pages long but i'm not smart enough to know the real answer to that so we'll just go to the wikipedia for that <clears throat> when it's 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 according to the seven phobias that make halloween so spooky like it's some of these that where i i i get curious like i want to know more about it and how it affects people how they think about it because you get like skelophobia which is the fear of skeletons is it looking at them um you know especially around halloween or is it knowing that there's a skeleton inside you that you know gives you structure is that part of that <laughs> that your brain's pretty much driving around a meat popsicle <laughs> right um another one which i don't necessarily like this would suck i don't necessarily have this fear but uh tapophobia uh fear of being buried alive this is the seven I, that's one of my bigger fears like again not phobia style but the thought of I've got a touch of claustrophobia, so the thought of being buried alive is enough to like drive me insane even just thinking about. All right, have I got a movie for you to watch? It's called Buried with Ryan Reynolds. Great. Mm -mm, mm -mm, um, mm -mm. So seven <laughs> phobias that make Halloween so spooky. This is Psychology Today's list. you got uh, cholerophobia, the fear of clowns, which uh, you mentioned. Uh, nyctophobia, the fear of the dark, which... As a young kid, I'm pretty sure I used to have that because I got locked in a basement and it uh, terrified the heck out of me. I'm okay with it now. But it's, it's, again, one of those ones where you're in the dark and sometimes, like, when you can't see anything, your mind starts just firing and all synapses going, uh-oh. Yeah, the sensory deprivation things are crazy. They do that in the uh, the Cave of the Winds. They go to that deepest part of the cave where there's absolutely zero light and they turn the lights off just so you can experience what it's like being in total blackness. And it's unnerving mm -hmm. yeah i did a, i did a uh halloween haunted house in denver where it was just, you had just a dinky little glow stick and everything it was just dark and that was that was trippy um then we have thanatophobia 
almost sounds like Thanos, which makes sense because it's the fear of death. And then, let's see, we did arachnophobia. We talked about that. Bear to line. Uh, Sam Hain, Samhainophobia, the fear of Halloween itself. So there's Psychology Today's list of phobias. They have uh, in-depth definitions of them and things like that. But uh, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. I mean, you look at Halloween. It's a fun, silly celebration about stuff, but... You have people dressing up in masks and costume, going to strangers' houses, asking for free and things, cutting out gourds and making heads out of them and lighting them on fire, and stories of monsters and ghosts and spooks everywhere. Like everything about Halloween is pretty much just capitalizing on phobias. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> making light of some of them, trying to get past other ones. But if if you have some of those, with Halloween's probably a scary time. <laughs> phobias and fears is is all about this time of year. Well. I'd didn't mean to rhyme there, but uh, that worked. <laughs> but I mean, can you, it, it, can you do it in limerick form next? <laughs> no, I'm sure that's a phobia. <laughs> and that's the thing is like, yes, there is, there's phobias everywhere. Everybody has a fear, a phobia of something. Some of them like it, like the definition says it's an irrational fear where somebody might say they're scared of something. They have that phobia and you're like, really? To each their own on that one. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it, and, I, and I and I can say from experience, like with my my uh, spider phobia growing up for it. Sometimes phobias are are fun. My drinking, I make fun of myself for the drinking fountain thing all the time. And if you get on with somebody that is okay with making light of their own phobia, go to town with them. But if somebody's legitimately scared about something, it's actually making them comfortable. You're not funny if you're trying to make fun of them or trying to rile them up. <laughs> Like, they just hate you. I mean, I did what? I did uh, throw some fake spiders on you in the studio when we were in the radio station. That is true. But had you ever thrown real spiders on me, I would have keyed your car. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, wouldn't, would, I wouldn't do a real spider. I have held Rosie the Tarantula, though. She's pretty adorable. <laughs> That's a, that. There's one that, 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 again, I don't know if it's necessarily a phobia, but it's a heebie-jeebies. is like centipedes. Centipedes and millipedes. All those little legs just like. And I've, I've held the millipede, and even still, I was like, ugh. All Just imagine of, it, like, crawling in your ear hole or something like that. Oh, like. God, all those little <laughs> legs, man. All those little legs is just awful. So, so we've now divulged some of our fears, so we want to hear from you, listeners. Uh, you're going to go to our uh, Facebook page, our Instagram page, and you're going to drop out what you have a strange phobia about, if you're willing to share it with us, especially something that's over the top and ridiculous, and you know that you are ridiculous for being afraid of it, but it doesn't change the fact that you still are. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know at Geek Geekish, and enjoy the holiday season, because Halloween is fun for many, not for all, but maybe going out and having a good time enjoying some of the uh, the fruits of phobias. What most Halloween decorations end up being, right? The fruits of the phobias. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know at Get Geekish. Thanks for listening once again, and we will talk at you next week. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. And speaking of more podcasts, we got plenty of them. Check the links. <laughs>